right, so today we have Tyler Tolbert as our special guest. And after Tyler Tolbert's done with the radio interview, we're actually going to check out one of his investment properties. I think it's a multifamily apartment building. I'm not sure he had a couple different apartment buildings, a couple different investment properties that he was thinking of taking us to after the radio show. So I'm not sure where we're going, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay tuned because Tyler is a really cool story. He went from nine to five to commercial real estate. The guy is buying commercial real estate now. He buys passive income and he went from quitting his nine to five, which he was super nervous about, to all of a sudden killing it in real estate in the investing world, not just like as a real estate agent, but as an investor in the commercial world. So really cool. He is also a real estate agent, just to be clear, but he's also killing it in the investing world, so you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to K-Talk Radio, 1640 AM. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. I am your host, Yoshi Shiraki, and our very special guest today is Tyler Tolbert. Tyler, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, man. This is awesome. Yes. All right, so can you share how you transitioned from a nine to fiver to real estate investor? What did that look like? Um, well, that's a yeah, good question. The the true answer is multiple nine to fivers. Mm. Um, so when I started doing real estate and started going to the RIAs, I was working at the time three jobs. Got it. Um, so it was quite unbalanced at the beginning, uh, but it, it allowed me kind of the the work ethic and just that I wanted it bad enough, right? Yeah. So I had I had three jobs one of which was my own business that I did on the side at nights okay. um, over at my dad's house. And then once we, once we got, I started going to the RIAs, mm -hmm. I learned about um, the owner-occupied multi-unit. Uh -huh. And uh, working all of those jobs allowed me to have a little bit of a, of a slush fund of money that I was able to use for a down payment. And awesome. It also provided W-2 income that was documentable that I could use for qualifying purposes. Yep. Um, and so then, again, going back to the RIA, that was just getting into the owner-occupied multi-unit game was was the first step for me because the barrier of entry was so small. Gotcha. <clears throat> gotcha. So then you now are into your owner-occupied multi-unit. Are you quitting your 9 to 5 now? Because you're living for free. Because I'm going to elaborate. You, sure. you bought a fourplex. Yes. And your three tenants paid you enough rent and if I'm not mistaken $50 extra cash flow so you were getting paid 50 bucks to live in a fourplex that everybody else was buying for you hypothetically paying for you yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> really, yeah really close um, yeah yeah that's exactly right the the three the three <clears throat> units rent covered my entire mortgage and yes. insurance payment um, there are operating expenses that, that don't fall into that formula so Free is a is a is a good term, but it's probably not real accurate. But it's it's cheaper than you're gonna live anywhere else, and also uh, also be the one on the mortgage. Right, and own a fourplex. Correct. How cool is that? Uh, and for three and a half percent down on an FHA loan is the is the wild part. Yes, yes, Just no crazy. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now you've cut your expenses. Ironically, you go from. Uh, did you did, were you did you own a home before the fourplex or did you rent nope. somewhere? I uh, I was your typical millennial. I lived at home with my mom okay. um, until I bought the owner occupied fourplex. Nice. So now you go from living at home with mom to owning a fourplex. That's why see Tyler went big Bailey right from the get go. Um, you go from your mom's to a fourplex that your tenants are now paying the mortgage for you. At that point, how far out are you from feeling I'm going to quit my job? Yeah, so um, I actually signed. I actually gave notice the day after I signed papers. No way. Yes. <laughs> so I. That's I, fast. It was yeah. I was I was at my job for a reason, um, and at the time I actually had told my manager I was like, dude, you know, he was really supportive, and he's like, dude, you guys should go do all this stuff and go, yeah. you know, and uh, I just said I was like, man, here's the reality. At the time, the fourplex was two hundred and seventy thousand bucks. And it sat on an acre of ground in Magna. Um, yeah. So it's not awesome, but those prices to anybody that's in the real estate market today knows yeah. that that's just incredible. Incredible. And uh, <laughs> I was making like 13 bucks an hour uh, at my W-2 and, and I, I just couldn't qualify for enough yeah. to buy it. So I, I actually told my manager, I was like, dude, I have to get a raise so I can qualify yeah. to buy this thing. And 
Um, I wrote the offer on the fourplex six times because I couldn't pay full price, so I had to just keep firing the same offer at them. Um, I got a $2 an hour raise from my job temporarily. I qualified for the loan, I closed on the deal, and I quit my job. That's amazing. All right, so we just got done doing the radio show with Tyler Tolbert. He shared a lot of great wisdom on going from a nine to five to becoming a commercial real estate investor, killing it, enjoying time with his family, spending time in the outdoors, leveraging the ability to purchase income. I love that statement, I purchase income. So he, gets, he, he purchases real estate that generates income and we're now gonna go check out one of these 21 unit complexes, right? Yes, sir. Awesome, can you tell me a little bit about it, please? Yeah, so it's a uh, 21 unit property kind of located between downtown Salt Lake and the University of Utah. Nice. We've got a mix of one bedrooms and two bedrooms. Um, bought it off market, are going through currently doing some renovations, getting rents up to up to where they should be, um, and then we'll reposition the debt load wow. in six to eight months. Wow, very cool. So you've seen us tour homes that people are renovating to fix and flip. We're gonna go check out a 21 unit complex renovation. It's a good, it's a good asset. Awesome, excellent. So definitely check out this tour of a 21 unit apartment building. We've never toured anything this big, so this should be really fun. This is one of our one bedroom units here. Yeah. This is probably the worst unit in the building. Wow, that's nice. This is, uh, this, like I said, this is the worst, worst unit in the building. Um, and it was that way when we acquired it as well. So we've made a couple of changes. Our original plan was to come through and basically renovate all of the units okay. in the whole building. Yeah. Um, which is not a completely accurate because about 70% of them have been renovated by the previous owners. Got it. The other 30 or 40%-ish are similar to this. Okay. So our idea was, let's go in, we'll renovate the ones that are rough yeah. Get them up to market gotcha. and then kind of leave the ones that have been renovated, roll them to what current rents would be, increasing the income for the asset, thus increasing the value. COVID came. We needed to, to pull an audible, I yeah. guess is the best way to yeah. say that, which is why this unit still looks this way. What we have elected to do um, and what we're going to be doing moving forward is we have elected to just strive for stability okay um, which is why this unit's for rent as it is okay rather than trying to maximize and why we're doing that is because of the displacement of the construction dollars mm, gotcha um, in proportion to the to the rent upside got it now the typically we would continue to deploy that capital because the interest rates are low we right. don't at the at the very current moment, we don't see a lot of risk in in the refinance piece. Yeah. Um, where three months ago, you know, we were really just not sure. Like, hey, we don't want to spend a half a million bucks on a reno, right? On a construction loan, and yeah. then get to the table, and now all of a sudden, you know, banks aren't lending or renewing, and now right. we've got it's like, hope, you know, maybe yeah. let's keep our exposure a little lower. Yeah. And, and Smart. just try to go slow. Um, a big thing for me is I buy assets that produce income on day one. Gotcha. So it, pro it provides some, some flexibility. Fantastic. So this is a one bedroom unit. As you can see, it's pretty spacious. Yeah. The um, We were gonna actually come in and pull this wall back to oh. right here. Okay. Oh, that would be nice. We didn't want to spend the money to re to remove and, yeah. and change all of the electrical sure. mannequins. It just gets more expensive. Yeah. So we were gonna bring the wall back to here and then we were going to change all of the cabinets, update the countertops, um, probably put in new flooring, and just this would be the big piece in this room is just right. opening up the interactiveness with the with the um, living space. Very cool. This is the bedroom in here. It's it's 13 feet this way by 11 feet this way. Nice. Um, this little nook kind of creates a unique opportunity. The bathroom is on the other side of the of the wall here through the closet. Okay. So our original plan, um, and again, to maximize rents, we were gonna be pushing top of market rents. Yeah, right? uh, yeah. Just based on how things were going, was we actually were gonna come through this wall. Oh, you can see this is oh, the yeah. cover plate. Yeah. So that means that there's plumbing back there. Right. We were gonna put a stackable washer and dryer oh. in, in every unit in the closets. And what we were gonna do is then move this wall yeah. to here. Got it. 
So then you'd still have a plenty big, just yeah, plenty big bedroom for totally. a one, for a one bed. You'd have a walk-in closet, yeah, and a stackable washer and dryer. Genius. It's kind of one of those things. It's like, do you spend the additional money to to get it there and push rents, or do you try and just fill them where they are and let it ride? Right. And right. Have, have a project in the portfolio for later. Exactly. Yeah. So we're still weighing those. Um, probably the path forward from here is likely to try a mixture of both because it's you know. Who knows, yeah. what, who knows what the market's going to do? No man. kidding. It's like you can't put your life on hold waiting for <laughs> right for bad shit to happen. So right now, have you seen every unit personally? So yes. you've been inside each one. Yes. Something interesting about this building mm -hmm. is everything is electric. Oh. So this is uh, not gas. This is this is just electricity. Oh so wow! Water That's heaters, cool. furnaces, but the furnaces, electric furnaces, are significantly more expensive ah. than a, a typical gas forced air furnace. Gotcha. Um, but another benefit that it does add, you know, just planting seeds for the future, is it's a lot easier to use renewable resources mm -hmm. with electric appliances versus gas. Gotcha. If we threw half a million bucks in solar on top, we probably could become the utility company on the property. Got it. Very typical bathroom, um, you know, rent renter grade. I would say it's far from far from nice, but it's also not definitely not the worst bathroom right in my portfolio. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of a similar. The game plan overall was similar. Mm -hmm. You can see the plumbing here. That's yep. the wall that backs up to the. Uh, oh yeah. To there, so we were gonna throw laundry in yeah. this bedroom's closet. Got it. Um, which would would create a smaller closet in the second bedroom. Got it. But we felt like the value. Um, to have washer and dryers in the unit um, was going to be superseded by a small closet. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah. this unit's been tore apart for about five months. Okay. Um, we tore this one apart when we bought the building with the intentions of doing the renovations similar to we did on uh, unit five, which is now occupied. Got it. Um, and then COVID came. The, the biggest thing we've had with this is on our one bedroom units. Uh, a lot of our students are uh, go to the U. Okay. And with the U and most schools right now doing a lot of online stuff. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, filling our vacancies been a little bit slower. Gotcha. Um, so we're not necessarily worried about it. We don't yeah. feel like the market's getting soft. Yeah. Um, but it's it's definitely slower. So. Gotcha. And that's why this has been staying this way. It's we've got a handful of vacancies. Okay. Um, and so we're just trying to get again get to more of a level stabilized playing field yeah and then kind of reevaluate where to allocate dollars got it very cool because we're on the hill it does not oh, seem wow. like that's a, a third story yeah seriously um, i was like wait that house is really tall <laughs> that's, a, yeah, that's on the third story so <laughs> is the kitchen torn up in here too um yeah there's for the most part this will get cabinets counters all of the the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Yep. Um, we probably won't elect to move the walls anymore. Okay. Uh, but we're just really not sure. You know, we're just trying to kind of figure out where, yeah. where things are going, and that's why this unit's kind of been left in idle. Gotcha. Um, so this is a, a large two bedroom unit. Yeah. Um, you can see the bedrooms are plenty big. They've got the what I call the feng shui cab, uh, closet doors. Yeah, this unit um, represents about sixty percent of the units here, probably. Gotcha. Um, that have been previously updated by the by the previous owners, so we didn't feel a whole lot of motivation um, to renovate these. No kidding. You know, these are pretty awesome. They're not totally up to date. There's definitely more modern stuff that you can do, but at the same time, it's like. This is this is great. Yeah, this is absolutely great. great. So we can show you right here. Um, this is the bathroom. As you can see, everything has been for the most part pretty updated. Again, that tile is not yeah. perfect, but yeah. it's it's really great. No kidding. This uh, this is where the stackable uh, would have gone in the two bedroom units yeah. had we continued to push on that plan. Gotcha. Which on some of these units that are still vacant. Um, as we as we can start to stabilize the asset, we may reevaluate adding in those and yeah. or adding them in during renewals in the future. This is also an alternative. You could put the that's a pantry right there for the oh, kitchen. Gotcha. So you, uh, 
essentially you could make that the washer dryer room. Right. Um, but we felt like there was a path of least resistance using the plumbing yeah. already in the in the in there. Right. So I mean, very nice. Just awesome, dude. They came like no this. kidding. And that's you know. Oh wow! Look at that. Are you kidding me? That's the third story from this side. Are you kidding me? Look at that view. Get that. Look at that view, Bailey. Of downtown. So in here, you know, updating appliances and things like that kind of are, are what we seem to be the most. Yeah. Options. It looks um, awesome too. But uh, we're just figuring it out. Yeah. Super clean. Super fresh. I love it. We can go down and uh, check out, uh, I believe unit seven is a remodeled one bedroom. Oh, great. Or it might be a remodeled small two bedroom. Um, so we can go check that out. Basically what, what we did in here, you can see, you know, and this was actually a learning experience. This, I think this used to be not built in. Oh. I believe that this used to be the exterior. Got it. And this would have been more of a breezeway yeah. type of a deal. Yeah. So there was, as you can see these, where we attempted to have a stucco guy yeah. patch this, um, there actually were guardrails. Interesting. And there were holes in the floor that went down all three levels. Oh, wow. Um, around all of the windows. Interesting. So you can see all these are patched in like yeah. this. Yeah. So what we elected to do, they were just like the two by four painted handrails they didn't, yeah. they didn't look bad right um, but this definitely looks better yeah so we pulled out they had a handful of just boob lights okay in the areas. we eliminated all of those and put in i think there's like 32 cans on each common hallway Got it. they're all on a automatic sensor so when you drive by here in the dark it's yeah. like lit up glowing beams of hallway wow very cool but just made the hallways feel a lot more expansive. Yeah, no by kidding. opening them up. I love it. Yeah, I can I can kind of visualize as you say that how it would probably feel really narrow. Yeah. So this is a small a small two bedroom unit. Okay. Um, but this would be what we would say is the pre like a reno pre yeah. previous owner oh, reno right same doors right. Um, more of a laminate style or vinyl floor, whatever you call this. Yeah. Kind of laminate. Um, and then just kind of been updated. Got it. These lay out a little bit differently than those other twos. Oh, yeah. And then the uh, laundry dryer would have gone in there, stackables. Yeah, or we would have put them in that. We we probably would have oh. figured out a way to, to do something there. Right. So it could go in that other bedroom closet and then they have units that are washer dryer got in, it in one unit actually. Yeah. Um, and we that could go there accessible from that other bedroom. Oh yeah, 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 that makes sense. Makes sense. So all the windows have been updated, all vinyl windows. Nice. Um, yeah. Very cool. Wow, this is awesome. So yeah, dude, it's cool. It's a cool property. Heck yeah. Work in progress. Dude, <laughs> love this. We staged a bunch of these, but I see some of them have stainless appliances. Oh, yeah. Um, this one does have a little bit of a different wall configuration because of the port part of the building oh, that, right. that it lands in. Right. In comparison to that other two bedroom upstairs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something that I'm working on right now is we have been uh, struggling with. I'm gonna call them coax cables. I don't know what they actually are, but the cables that your internet providers put in. Yeah. There's 21 units. In oh, this, 21 <laughs> units in this building, and I'm pretty sure there's enough internet connection there to power all of Salt Lake. Yes. <laughs> this is our cable, our cable jungle. Um, and it uh, getting it removed has been a challenge. Wow. You know, we've called uh, every provider. I've tried to hire technicians like for CenturyLink, yeah. Comcast or whoever to come out here and take care of this. Cause it's, as they put in a new service to a unit, yeah. they run new cable. And then instead of taking down the old cable, <laughs> like a responsible person and or right. reusing it, they yeah. just put a new one up. Oh my gosh. You know, so like you can see most of these are cut and don't even go anywhere. Oh um, my gosh. So we just, we actually are gonna have to hire an electrician to to help us determine which of these are live yeah. and which are not, and then we'll pull them down. Got it. But kind of crazy. No kidding. All of the cables go in these boxes. Yeah. 
Well, here's a, another box. Oh. Literally not even anything in it. Yeah, it's completely so, empty. So, hey, instead of pulling down the old one when we upgrade to a big one, let's just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are storage sheds. Oh, fantastic. That's cool. People that donate the couch to yeah. us that oh. we're going to have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> and we have, I believe there's 11, 11 under underbuilding parking stalls. That's great. That's awesome. So you can see the cables. Um, something interesting that we that we learned on this deal was the institutional debt. So Fannie uh, Freddie debt. Yeah. A lot of times, if you have a, a loan balance north of a million on multifamily assets, yeah. I think now with COVID they've uh, they've bumped it to one point. 1.25 million okay loan balance you can get uh, institutional debt which the benefit of that is longer amortization periods ah. as well as uh, non-recourse meaning that you're not personally signing on the debt Got it's it. only secured by the asset so if oh. you were to default they don't come after you your house your cars all your stuff it's o the only recourse they have is taking your building gotcha um, this building will not qualify for institutional debt because of the tuck under parking ah. um, I, I believe it's Fannie does not feel that these are earthquake sustainable. Oh, interesting. Um, which, you know, we just went through a pretty big earthquake yeah, and it's still yeah. standing up. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna beg to differ. <laughs> right. Um, but, but because of that, we won't be able to get um, institutional debt. Gotcha. Unless we chose to retrofit and upgrade all of this seismically. Oh, uh, okay. Um, the cost to do that the institutional debt's not competitive enough against right. local, local debt to, right. to justify the, the extra cost. That makes sense. It was replaced the month that we bought the property, yep. but this this flat pipe, I'll send you some photos of this as well. Our rain gutter systems on a flat roof drain typically through common walls oh, of the units. Okay, yeah. And then they pop down. Um, well, you can't, it's kind of hard to see, but like this, this pipe, you imagine it being in that cove and then running yep. to the roof? Yeah. It comes down through the middle. Got it. So it came out here, and at one point in time, they all just spit out on the ground. Oh. Um, there was one down here that didn't even clear. So this was, this was like some <laughs> super not awesome, like wavy, hokey pokey system that uh -huh. was not working. So we just upgraded all of this, have it draining into that front front flower bed, and the idea there is to try and prevent. Um, hazardous conditions in the winter that's great oh yeah that makes total as sense. well as, as well as keeping the draining from going underneath our supports right because right. we want settling and things like that exactly um so just trying to divert all water flow away from the structure got it you can see these pop out oh yeah from up on the roof up there yeah um they used to come and were bolted on the side of this oh, wall oh gotcha and just drained out right here oh my gosh um which you can only imagine what we have not owned it through a winter yeah. yet the you, ice you could only imagine what that would be like yes you know so no kidding we diverted it into here and it goes into a french drain coming off of there now that that feeds this this uh rock garden awesome very cool where's the french drain in the middle um it goes up there so you can oh. see that black pipe yep. start coming yep. out and then it, the water, the idea is, is the water will dissipate this direction. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, Tyler, thank you so much for letting us tour your 21-unit complex. Well, I learned a lot myself just through this walkthrough. I'm sure the listeners, or the viewers in this case, also got um, a lot of value in it. Is there, are there any last words of wisdom that you would share with anybody who's thinking, man, this guy went from a fourplex, owner-occupied, to multiple assets, one being a 21 unit a complex. Obviously, we talked on the radio show, you gotta just step up to the plate. Any other words of wisdom? Man, that's probably the most important one. Gotcha. Just do, just do something. Right, right, take action. One step forward is better than no steps at all. So yeah, I love it. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much for letting us tour your amazing property. It looks cool. great. Well, thank you. That's yeah. Work in progress for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to put them in the comment section below. And please give this video a thumbs up. And thanks so much for watching. Okay, before we part ways, in case you have a dog or know someone else who does have a dog, I wanted to take a quick second to show you the snap leash. The snap leash can literally do so many things. 
and I'm going to share with you one of the many cool things that it can do. As you can see, the snap leash is designed with two swivel hooks, one on each end. This end has a cushion stitched into it to make it comfortable when walking your dog. Now all you have to do is take this swivel hook, put it into this very first grommet, and now you've got your handle. Okay, so now let's imagine you're at the park and you want to secure your pet quickly, safely, and easily to a park bench, a tree, or a pole because you just want to sit down and relax. Well, all you need to do is take this swivel hook, remove it from the very first grommet, wrap this leash around any size tree or pole or park bench, and put it into the appropriate grommet, and now you have secured your pet quickly, safely, and easily. And when it's time to head home, another great feature about the snap leash is you can simply wrap it around your waist for hands-free walking. Lastly, if you ever accidentally forget your waist bags at home, these grommets make a great place to fasten the waist bags so you never leave home without them. And if you want to see all of the other cool things that the snap leash can do, then please just click on the link below and find out why so many others are falling in love with the snap leash.